you know, if you find this, like, to be your thing. Okay, so this is the one that I, hi guys, we're recording now, so I'm just going to continue. Um, this is the one that frustrates people because sometimes you do try stuff and it doesn't work. This is where you have to be solid in your algebra and your strategies. Okay, so we verified identities by putting like values in like at when theta is pi over three. We've proven it just for that one point. Like so verifying is like for one particular value. In 6.3, we're gonna prove for all angles. So we're gonna show that it's true. We're gonna show the truth to an equation for all possible values. So we have to use left-hand side versus right-hand side, and we're gonna treat the left-hand side of the equation independent from the right-hand side. So you can't like multiply both sides by the same to cancel something out on the bottom. You're gonna treat the left-hand side like, like it's an expression, and you're gonna treat the right-hand side like, in its, in, uh, like it's an expression. Okay, sometimes you work both sides, sometimes you only have to work one side. Okay, format's super important. You need to know your left from your right for this lesson, which might be difficult. I know, it's gonna be hard. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are going to prove this identity. This is the way you must set it up, ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna set up a left-hand side. You're gonna set up a right-hand side. This line I just drew down the middle of this T-chart is like your equal sign, okay? It replaces your equal sign. So we are gonna treat the left-hand side like it is an expression, and our goal is to make the left-hand side exactly the same as the right-hand side. Okay, wait, but it's still ridiculous. But <laughs> <laughs> well, like, when you're wow. you're angry are they always going to equal each other? Are you going to give us, like, no. three points? They'll, they'll always equal each other. Yeah. Okay, Amber makes a good point. She asked a very important question. Are they always going to equal each other? And the answer is yes. I'm not going to trick you with a proof that doesn't work out, okay? Unless I've typed it wrong and then, well, it's fair game. So this one's nice and easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to look at what side I'm going to work with. What side would you work with? Left. Left. The reason why is cos is a prime, guys, this isn't going to work if, like, this is, this is the tough stuff, so I don't want you to miss anything. That's my thing. Well, I'm going to not work this side because this is already at a primary trig ratio. There's nothing I can do to it. This side has a cotan in it, so I can do something to it. So cotan, I'm going to rewrite as what? Cos over sine. Cos over sine. So again, we treat them as two different, like as expressions. Like you just have to work one side or you just have to work the right-hand side. You can't work them together. So the signs cancel each other out. So please note that I've done nothing to the right-hand side. I've done nothing at all. And that is perfect. And we are going to make the statement that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Maybe, maybe. I'm a big fan of this, so I might have integrated it in somewhere, but. Okay, sliding over. So things are a little bit more complicated here. So there should be there should be no equal sign when you're doing this. Ah, oh, all right. Already, you're ready. We haven't even, the rest of us are barely got this written down and you're changing stuff. So.
So the more you work with it, you're going to see it, but this is the Pythagorean identity. So Pythagorean identity is cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. That is the very first identity. So you're going to rearrange it. And cos squared x equals 1 minus sine, oops, sorry guys, sine squared x. So, so all I did was take the Pythagorean identity and I moved sine to the other side. I will tell you that manipulating the Pythagorean identity is a very helpful strategy. So it doesn't work though if they're not squared, like they have to be squared. So now we can change this whole thing to cos squared x. Not really much to do on the left hand side now. Not really much to do over there. So I'm going to pop to the right hand side. We're going to deal with that cotan, right? So So you guys know that if nothing's stated in between them, what, what operation are we doing? Multiplying. So this can cancel out that. Well, because they're all multiplied together. And cos times cos? Cos squared x. Left-hand side equals right-hand side. Okay, I will tell you those were nice. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that, no, that's not what a narcissist is. That, that's not the definition of a narcissist. <laughs> That would be, that one, that one, I love it. I'm an ist, I love it. Guys, I enjoy this. I obviously understand that maybe this isn't your jam, but you'll get there. You're going to enjoy this. Maybe, maybe not this year, but you're going to enjoy it. Hey, didn't we see this example? We did. Like we just saw it, like in six point two. No, we never. Oh, we did. Yeah. Did we not just do this, you silly gooses? Is that not this? Huh? Is that why you left it? No, that was just serendipitous. Wow. Serendipitous. What did you say? Serendipitous. Wow. Okay. She said narcissist, and narcissist turned out one offer. Okay. Oh, exactly. We're just we're throwing words out. Like it's fate. Serendipity. All right. What are we gonna do? Okay. So what did we end up with in the last one? So what did we do? Hey, no, let's do it with cosine this time. But yeah, let's try something different. You know what, guys? Just let me have my fun, okay? You guys. So I'm going to replace, like last time Pablo said, let's use sine. I want to replace with cosine this time. I just... <laughs> two... O squared x minus 1. And we got to change the bottom too. Are you okay? Okay.
I did some fast math there, folks. Follow it through. Follow it through. I just distribute the negative and I combine like terms. Yes. Nice. Well, because one subtract a negative one is going to turn to an add, so one plus one is two. Okay, just look, you're, you're in the advanced class, slow down. I haven't even got this written down, but yes, go ahead. So I wouldn't leave the two in there. I would definitely common factor it out because I do want to cancel it, right? So again, this is like using all the math from all the grade levels all at once, everything you've got, but you got to do it so that you're not changing the value of anything. Mm -hmm. and I have two yep, because I common factored a two out. Okay. So now those twos are gone. Let's do something with this cos. That's, uh, that's, that's the Pythagorean theorem, right? So that's going to be... What can I cancel out now? Yes. No, 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 like on the left hand side. Like you have to put no, you just write it once and it stays there. If I'm not working the left hand side at all, I just have to make sure that the first statement's there. So then left hand side equals right hand side. So as you can see, like even if we, like, so back in that original one, if we had put cosine in there, it still would have worked. We just used sine right off the hop, which worked delightfully. Sometimes that happens. I told you guys the story. I did a proof in like 12 lines. A student walks up and shows me a three line proof that's perfect. Sometimes you just do more math. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. That's what I went, oh, about. <laughs> okay, so not a bad strategy. I feel like calculus, the known truths in that. Like, are you seeing? No. <laughs> the conjugate, that's what we want. No, they're not, because rationalizing denominators, you know how to do, and you know what the conjugate is. It's the difference of squares partner. Oh. What? You say that like you <laughs> call it that. Well, but its real name is conjugate. I don't want to send you out to the world and have you not know. Like somebody refers to it as conjugate, and you're like, I don't know what that is, but you I do. I had to repeat myself that in class when they were talking about it. Okay. <laughs> so instinct goes right away to Pythagorean identity, but what's the problem with that? There's no squares. So it doesn't work. So another helpful strategy that you're going to put in your back pocket is difference of square partner. Okay, I'm just. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, can you guys factor that? Okay, so that you guys would agree that they're difference of squares? Yeah. If I multiply them back together, I get back to here? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so this one's a squared, that one's a perfect, life's good, right? Both perfect squares. So in this one, I know that if this was a co-squared, I could work with it. And what's one squared? One. Still one. So I know that if I multiply by difference of squares partner, the one that it's missing, 
So this one's a subtract, so which one would I multiply by? Plus. By the plus. So but here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom because we are treating this like it is an expression. No, we, we're not doing anything to this side yet. You can't, like, it's almost like there's the great wall of identities right down the middle. You cannot cross it. So when I multiply those through, I don't think I want, oh, do I want to multiply? I don't think I want to multiply the bottom. <laughs> oh, I do want to multiply it. I'm just not sure I want to multiply it through. We're going to have to work both sides. You're trying to get them to both look exactly alike. You're not trying to get it. You should. Like if it was sine over cos, I would expect you to put 10, right? Okay, how does that feel? Sort of, kind of? Okay, what, yep, yeah, sure. Sorry, which numerator, denominator, what are we talking about? Like here, are you asking if I do it to this side? So I multiplied these two together. And I just, they're factors, I just didn't multiply them through. Oh, okay. So you want me to do the expanded version. So I've got, sorry, one plus cos x times 1 minus cos x. So Teresa, I'm multiplying for you, right? So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times by negative cos x is negative cos x. Cos x times by a positive 1. And cos x times by that is going to be a negative cos squared x. So then when I simplify it, those middle terms cancel each other out. Right? So we've just got a little bit of experience with difference of square multiplying. So you don't have to show the step if you don't want to. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, this is called the difference of square partner it has a name and it's called the conjugate. Okay. All right. Now, what can I do with this? Pythagorean them up. Okay, cancel out my signs. Done. So left hand side equals right hand side. So sometimes you're going to work one side, sometimes you'll work both sides, some, like sometimes it'll be the left, sometimes it'll be the right. Sometimes you'll do lots of work on one side and a little bit of work on the other. And that's the thing, that's going to be your frustrating part about this is that it might not pop off the page at you. You're going to go down a rabbit hole that's really, really difficult. Okay, 6-1, 6-2, 6-2. Six, two. So we got sum, or sorry, we have difference, sum, and double. Pythagorean identity, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. You gotta make, you gotta make some life choices here. How do you know what you want to do? The right hand side doesn't scare me at all. No, sorry, the left hand side doesn't scare me at all. What's my problem with the right hand side? 
it's that post double ide double angle identity. Just because how many options do I have? Three. Three. I will tell you that if I only have coast on the top, first thing I'm going to try is the coast one, coast only. That's what I'm going to try first. So I know, well, I think I know. Sorry, I'm drawing over this pad of paper. I think I know that I'm going to have to do more work on the right-hand side. It looks like it's more work. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. And on the bottom. Are you on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to replace this with the coast only option. Um, oh, I got to write in my other side. Cotan X minus cosecant X. I'm going to leave that just for now because really those are reciprocal functions. I'm not too worried about them. They're not going to take a lot of effort. And I don't know if that's the right answer, but I'm going to try that first. So I'm going to go 2 cos squared x minus cos x over 2 sine x cos x plus sine x. So hold on. All I did was this got replaced with, oh, did I miss a one? I missed a one. Sorry, guys. I missed a one. I was like, I'm missing one thing. I just got so excited. So all I did was replace that off the formula sheet. Those two things came right from my formula sheet. And this came right from my formula sheet. So I had to make a decision about what cos one to use and I decided really early that I was just going to use the cos only because there was a cos there. So you're in your double angle, so you're at your bottom of your page on your left hand side. Okay? So I picked option number three for cos double angle. No, go down one more. Because cos, like the first one's sine. And then cos has three options, and I picked the third option. Yeah. Okay. So Basil, what did what were you? What mathematically moved you to do next? What are you doing next? Common factoring. Common factoring. Um, maybe writing that numerator might be, ooh, I can't call them factor that numerator. Okay, but what could we do with that numerator? I like it. Um, what could I do with the bottom? Basil. I can common factor. What am I going to common factor out of there? Sine x, because there's a sine x in the front. And there's a sine x in the back. So I'm going to take a sine x out. And that's going to leave me with 2 cos x plus 1. I, like I said, you're going to use all the math from all the times that you've ever been. And you're going to do all of it. Well, I've got a little bit more experience with it. So I knew if I had all coses, I'm more likely to be able to do something with them. Either I'm going to factor it, common factor it, but as soon as I add a sign in there, things become a little bit kafuzzled, but maybe they become easier. Who's to say? They all will work. It's just how painful it is to get to the answer. Um, I'm going to do this on a side piece of paper. I'm going to factor this on a side piece of paper. I'm not going to do the work for factoring in my identity. Don't do it. It will be too much. So on a separate piece of paper, do your factoring.
right? So complex trinomial factoring. Grade 10s just did it. So you take your 2 by your negative 1. What do you get? You get negative 2. What are the factors in negative 2 that add up to a negative 1? Negative 2, positive 1. You rewrite out your middle terms like that. So everything still is the exact same value, it just looks different. So we're going to look at these two and we're going to common factor. And, and cos. And so I'm left with cos x minus 1. And I look at these two. Can, is there anything I can take out of there? No. So if there's nothing I can take out of there, we always take out a positive 1. So take out a 1 and I'm left with the exact same thing. I know I've done it correctly if this one and this one are the exact same thing. Okay, so that was my side note. That's on a scrap piece of paper somewhere. So I'm going to go back to my identity notes. And I'm going to put my two cos x plus 1. Oh, isn't that exciting? Anybody see it? Yeah. I think you guys are just humoring me now. But I appreciate it. So what, yeah? This one? Um... So there was a sign here and a sign here. So it's just like as if it was a number, I'm just going to take it out, plunk it on the outside. And if you take it out of here, it's like dividing it out. Like when you common factor, you're dividing it out. So sine x divided by sine x leaves you with that one. Just like when I did it here, when I took out the two cos, I took out the whole term, but you have to leave that one there. Okay. All right. So we all see it. So let's deal with it. You guys are like scallion. That does not look like the left hand side, but it does if you split it. So this would be cos x over sine x subtract 1 over sine x. I'm just changed the left hand side to equal the And that's perfect. Okay, great. That's wonderful. But it, did you change it so it had a common denominator? Yes. Okay, good. So then this would be cotan x minus cosecant x. It's not awful. Wow. This is, you will have one identity question proving an identity on your final exam. Maybe. You're all capable. Um, I ran out of room. I got kind of wide on that page. This is a blank page on the back, so I'm just going to rewrite the identity. You're leaving? Yeah, oh. Okay. Okay, as you're rewriting this, does anybody see anything that on that first one? That denominator, yeah. Okay. I can't, like, this is the first time you're seeing it. So the more practice you have, the better you're going to be at these things. 
Okay. So, Basil saw what I was hoping you guys would see, that this is a difference of squares. Yeah. Okay? And right away, we know that there's only one thing I can substitute in there. So, the left-hand side is actually kind of nice. The denominator. It's a perfect square in the front, it's a perfect square in the back, and they're separated by a subtract sign. So can we put this side to Yeah, so we're going to substitute in its identity. So 2 sine x cos x minus cos x over 2 sine x plus 1, 2 sine x minus 1. All I did on my formula sheet was I took this and replaced it with its identity. Those are right from the formula sheet. Okay, so right like this stuff. So what do you see in that numerator now? Two coses. So what am I going to do? I'm going to common factor it out. So the cos x goes outside, and I'm left with 2 sine x minus 1 over 2 sine x plus 1, 2 sine x minus 1. Okay, cancel. Exciting. Mm, this one I'm actually going to pause right here. This one I'm going to pause for a minute. Because there, it doesn't feel like there's anything else I can do here. There's no squares. There's no nothing. Like it just, And I don't want to separate it yet because it might, it might, I might not need to. So I'm going to pause on this side and I'm going to start working the right-hand side. Lefts and rights are hard. Can you comment back that Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to common factor that cos out. How are you going to common factor cosine of cos two? Um, you have no problem doing yeah. that, right? What would you take out? You just take out a single x, right? Okay. Yeah. Right? Okay. I uh, yes. Why would you leave? What would twig you to leave that denominator the same? Because it's the same on the other side, right? So we don't want to mess with it too much. Yes. So this, that should pop off the page to you. One, it is the Pythagorean identity, and it has a value of one. Ooh, I need to fix up my left-hand side, though. No, I just need to fix it up. It's not finished. You can't leave it like this. That's bad or bad. You guys did it? So, do you see sometimes why you leave a side and go work another side? Like, sometimes you don't need to pull it apart. That's it, we're done the lesson. Okay, can I have a question? Okay, I got it.